Good morning. I'm very thankful that you're able to join me this morning. I hope that you're doing well. This morning we get to take a look as we begin our devotion with uh, Psalm 59. And Psalm 59 is one of those psalms that reflects very well on the world that we're in today and the crisis that we're seeing around the world, the protests that are there as well. The thing about Psalm 59 is it's a psalm where David is in a very dire strait, at least that's how the psalm begins, is he's remembering or writing from that position in his life where he has to escape his house because Saul has sent men to kill him. So he's there with his wife, and his wife warns him that her dad, who's Saul, is going to kill him. So he hides, and he r r climbs off the roof of the house, and she kind of makes a fake David dummy, and she puts it in the bed there. And uh, David writes this psalm about what it's like to flee from his life. And the neat thing about the psalm is he doesn't just talk about, you know, the things that we might expect him to talk about. He talks about the type of men that he's fleeing from. And as he types, talks about the type of men that he's fleeing from, he's talking about them in terms of, do they fear God? That's his defining understanding. Do they fear God or not? And if they're not fearing God, he says, then there's a different end for them than those who fear God. So as we look at Psalm 59 today, it really reflects well on everything we see going on around us. Because if people don't fear God, if they don't think that at the end, there will come a judgment for the righteous and the unrighteous. Then they can say, you know what, in this life, I can just do whatever I want. I won't be caught. As long as I'm not caught, it's good. And we're seeing that, that over and over again, people have done evil, particularly towards the vulnerable, saying, well, as long as I'm not caught. So let's hear David's words as we reflect on Psalm 59 together. For the director of music, to the tune of Do Not Destroy, of David, when Saul had sent men to watch David's house in order to kill him. Deliver me from my enemies, O God. Protect me from those who rise up against me. Deliver me from the evildoers and save me from the bloodthirsty men. See how they lie in wait for me. Fierce men conspire against me for no offense or sin of mine, O Lord. I have done no wrong, yet they are ready to attack me. Arise to help me. Look on my plight. O Lord God Almighty, the God of Israel, rouse yourself to punish all the nations. Show no mercy to wicked traitors. Selah. They return at evening, snarling like dogs, and prowl about the city. See what they spew from their mouths. They spew out swords from their lips, and they say, Who can hear us? But you, O Lord, laugh at them. You scoff at all those nations. O my strength, I watch for you. O my God, you are my fortress, my loving God. God will go before me and will let these who gloat over me. And God will go before me and will let me gloat over those who slander me. But do not kill them, O Lord, our shield, or my people will forget. In your might make them wander about and bring them down. For the sins of their mouths, for the words of their lips, let them be caught in their pride. For the curses and lies they utter, consume them in wrath, consume them till they are no more. Then it will be known to the ends of the earth that God rules over Jacob. Selah. They return at evening, snarling like dogs, and prowl about the city. They wander about for food and howl if not satisfied. But I will sing of your strength. In the morning I will sing of your love. For you are my fortress and my refuge in times of trouble. O oh, my strength, I will sing to you, O oh, God, are my fortress, my loving God. So in Psalm 59, David, uh, as one man says, David begins this psalm as a man, as a young man, just fleeing for his life. But he ends this psalm as a king, reflecting on where he has found his strength. And they're saying that because they see signs of editing through the psalm that imply that David began writing this or thinking about this, and he continued to work on it in such a way that it's the King David who's talking about God protecting his people and God pointing all of Israel to righteousness that wrote the end of the psalm. 
So all that to say that this is a beautiful reflection on David's whole life and how through his whole life he saw people who thought that with their words they could do things that weren't just and weren't righteous. But in the end, God shows himself to be a firm foundation. Now there's this ongoing thing that I think is cool here, and that's just this image of wicked men as snarling dogs. And in verse 6, it says, They return at evening, snarling like dogs, and prowl about the city. See what they spew from their mouths. It's like this, it's fearful, it's wicked, they're still dogs, so they're not too much to be afraid. But if there's a pack of them, you need to be careful. And that's his first description of them. Then he hops back to them in the, in one of the, in the last kind of stanza in verse 15, 14 and 15. And it's this similar imagery, but yet at the same time there's a twist. And this is the idea that they wander about looking for food and they're not satisfied. The word that's used for snarling there could just as well mean whining in this case. That there's this sense that they're now they're wandering about the city, but they're wandering about the city not fearsome, not not uh, powerful, not something to be in, feared of, but something that's just pathetic. You know, like a wander, wandering wild dog that uh, that is going hungry. And so this is the image that David has set for the wicked through the whole psalm. It's this idea that they start out strong and threatening to the the person who follows God. But as God, as the, we keep our eyes on God and we continue to watch them, God doesn't just eliminate them. He shows the world and he shows us that their strength is nothing. As it fails them, that's the whole thing where he says, let them, David says, let them wander about. What he's getting at there is that let the wicked wander so that we don't just forget them, so that we see that their wicked path only led them to hunger. And he ends by saying, no, but I am firm in God. He is my strength. He is my fortress. He is loving. And this is the covenant that David delights in. And so for us today, the news is terrible. It's awful. I mean, I, I just weep for what I see in my homeland of the United States of America. For New Brunswick, uh, there's a lot to pray for. For the rest of Canada, there's a lot to pray for as well. Um, the world, there's certainly a lot to pray for. And at the same time, the news also brings me word of wicked men doing wicked things and foolish things. In all of this, I can be afraid or I can take my fears and bring them to God. I can say, Lord, you're my foundation. You are my shield. You have a plan that does not end. And I will find my peace in that plan. Now, I do that. That doesn't mean that I'm not sad for everything that I see around me in the world. In fact, it, I think it creates a space for me to lament, knowing that God's in control says, that allows me to act as Jeremiah did in, the, in Lamentations and to cry out as David does as well and just say, Lord, I see this, this wickedness, and I see this brokenness, and I see this sadness in the world. And yet I will trust you and I will cry out for them. And I will cry for those who are um, without hope and those who don't feel like they have a voice and those who have um, those who have been wounded and those who have been killed. And that's what the church can do. We can, we can listen and we can lament for the brokenness uh, that surrounds us. And we can cry out to God asking for healing and asking for him to make us that healing as well. So let's do that now. Uh, let's pray. I hope that, uh, well, please join me. Father, we thank you for your promises, that you are steadfast, that you are a fortress, and that you have a plan that will never change. And that plan is a plan to love your people, to build your church, and to one day return as we anticipate that, we know that the world is a broken place. As the Psalms say, the nations rage and the peoples shout in vain. Um, there's a brokenness in the world, and yet that brokenness uh, needs your healing. And we, the church, are the healing for the nations. It's, our, it's the Holy Spirit in us, the fruits of the Spirit, that are intended to heal the nations. So Holy Spirit, rise up through your church that your church may repent of the times, the many times that we have uh, not loved our brothers and our sisters properly, 
that we have turned our backs on their concerns and their cares, that we have uh, prejudiced ourselves against them instead of compassionately lowering ourselves as Christ did to uh, lift them up. Forgive us, Lord, and guide us by the power of your Spirit that we may walk righteously in this broken world, showing the world what the love of Christ should look like, not what we've told the world of Christ, the world that told the world that the love of Christ does look like from our broken actions. We pray, Father, for the churches across the states in the midst of these riots that are taking place there, and we pray, Father, for the health of your people and for the health of this whole nation. I mean, we're, I haven't looked at the count for today, but I know that when I looked over the weekend, it was uh, 1.7 million people have been infected with COVID-19 in the United States, and there were over 100,000 dead. And Father, I pray for your mercy and your compassion on that nation. And I pray for Ontario, where they see over 400 people infected with COVID-19 just yesterday. Lord, bring your hand of mercy and healing. Uh, slow down these things. Calm these nations and these peoples as their hearts, full of fear, do foolish things. Father, we pray for a world that's broken. We pray for your healing, and we pray for Brazil. We pray for Russia, Africa, and South America. Lord, let your healing come. And uh, Lord, we pray for your guidance as a people to love well in our communities. We pray for those that are hurting and for those that have loved ones in hospitals and they can't go to see them. We pray for wisdom for those people who are opening up churches. Give us wisdom as we look at opening up our church. How can we keep us, keep our community safe and serve our community well while worshiping you well at the same time? Give us wisdom beyond ourselves, Father. And Lord, always help us to take refuge first and foremost in Jesus, trusting in his righteousness and in his promises and acting in his stead in this broken world. Amen. Well, thank you guys for joining me for that uh, prayer, and I hope that you have a blessed and absolutely beautiful day. May the peace and the power of the living God go with you wherever you go today. Amen.